Hey everyone, so for today's lesson, we are going to be making our own mandalas. And mandalas are very important in Tibetan Buddhism. So we're going to start the lesson off with a quote from a Buddhist monk, the Dalai Lama. And he said, we can never obtain peace in the outer world until we make peace with ourselves. So I want you all to take this art project as a way for you to find your own inner peace so that no matter what is going on on the outside, you can always feel calm and peace whenever you need to. So mandalas are circles made up of geometric designs. So you can see the shape repeats itself all around in a circle and it goes around and around. So mandalas are seen in many cultures such as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Christianity. And in Tibetan Buddhism, they are also used to help with meditation. So I'm going to show you some examples of some mandalas. So this is actually a calendar from the Mayan civilization. And so they used to use these mandalas as calendars 1,500 years ago. So mandalas have been around for a very long time. And mandalas in Christianity are usually seen as stained glass windows in churches. And so this mandala is in a church in Germany. And then in Hinduism, mandalas usually have this square shape with the four gates and then a circle on the inside. And finally, this is a sand mandala that the Tibetan Buddhist monks created with colored sand. So they have like a metal straw that they will lightly tap the sand out of so that they can control where it goes. And in this post, I put a link to a video about Tibetan Buddhist monks and why they create these sand mandalas. So definitely check it out. And then, well, so whenever you are starting, um, I'm going to show you my sketching process. So this is the time whenever, usually 10 minutes before we actually start on the project, we practice on the whiteboards or we sketch a plan before, before we start on the nice paper, if you guys remember. So I'm just going to show you a few ways to do this. If you are somebody that likes to be precise and you want everything to be very specific, then you can definitely use a ruler. You could split it into halves and then more sections into eighths if you want to and then each section you would draw your shape and then you would just go around in a circle drawing the same shape over and over again and um, yeah if you if that is not really your artistic style and you just want to draw more freely then you don't have to use a ruler and you can just kind of eyeball it so that's what I'm gonna do in this next one and that is usually more my style because for some reason I get more confused when things have to be very specific. So here I so you're going to start off with whatever shape in the middle. So I started off with this tiny dot. Then I created these lemon shapes around it. So four and then I made these shapes four times around. So you just go all the way around repeating the same shape each time. And then also for inspiration, if you have a sketchbook, I would definitely look through that. So sometimes I draw these random shapes in my sketchbook. Um, and also I just like to sketch other things outside. This is from when I just go, when I'm outside, I just look in the grass and you just see a bunch of different shapes of leaves and flowers. So if you have a backyard, there's so many shapes out there that you could find. So, and then I'm just continuing to draw random shapes. Just, you know, warming up, just getting whatever is in my brain out on a piece of paper. So I would encourage all of you to use a sketchbook during this time. Um, just find an empty notebook lying around. If you don't have that, you can make your own sketchbook. If you have paper, you can just put, um, just get like a stack of papers and then you can make hole punches or you can staple them together 
And so over this weekend, I want you to search for unique shapes. If you can go out, if you can go outside, definitely do that. There are so many shapes in nature that you could find and record those shapes in your sketchbook so that later on when you start your project, you can look back at your sketchbook and also just keep your sketchbook around so that anytime you get inspired or you get an idea, you can just draw in there really quickly. So good luck everyone. I just take this time to practice, you know, focus and patience and I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Bye.